the Upper Murray is the source of the Murray River. So we're talking about uh, the region upstream of Albury and it's draining the country from uh, a large arc from Kosciuszko right round to um, uh, virtually the back of Omeo. So this is the source of the Murray River. And Jack Rhodes was the inspiration to do, again, the work on the Upper Murray because he was the fishing inspector at Wodonga for 29 years, something like that. And one of the few accounts that he actually saved was that of the McFarlane brothers who grew up at Wodonga. And so he had their recollections of uh, the fishery around Wodonga back to the 1890s, what was in the river and what was in the lagoons. One of the interesting stories he had was he met a man at Tom Grogan Station and uh, he didn't write down his name. And the story was that he used to fish the Indi before World War I and he used to catch lots of blue nose and white high brim, trout, cod, macquarie, perch. And he recalled coming back from World War I and watching the fishery go into decline from that point. So by the 1930s they had disappeared. His claim to fame was he caught the first trout in the area. Uh, that was a, a, the fish, his first day back from World War I, that was the first fish he caught. He didn't know what it was and he had to take it into town to get it identified. So he caught the first brown trout. So that was a bit of a, a, a link into trying to ID him. And actually I was able to track down who was the person. And it all fitted the, the story. Uh, his name was Charlie Mildren. I found a relative of his. He did go away to the First World War and uh, he came back and claimed to have caught the first brown trout. And in fact, he uh, was awarded a bravery medal in the First World War. And it turns out, while he finished his life at Tom Grogan Station, he was at Brigham Station at Coryong, and that's where his stories originated from. So I was actually able to fill in the missing pieces for Jack's story. The other guy that provided fantastic information on the Upper Murray is Roy Grant. And uh, he lived at Burrowie, which is between Corryong and, and Aubrey. And he had a box of glass plate photographs from the 1930s. And one of them is my favorite photo is uh, of um, he and his brother with a trout cod from the river. And uh, Roy had a fantastic memory. And he not only had his own memory, but he had his mother's and father's story. So the big drought that wiped out the catfish, the changes that happened to the river. And he talked as a boy, you know, being able to throw in a line, you know, it was an old bush pole with a stringy bark pole with a leather line and just pulling cod out left, right and centre. And then he talked about the overfishing in the 30s and the fishery declining. So um, Roy was a fantastic resource on the Upper Murray and had the photos to support the history. Tom Jarvis uh, at Tintoldra, he had a few photos and stories of trout cod. Uh, talked about them being common and, and actually seeing some big ones caught there. Uh, when he was a boy. Len Lebner at Coryong, uh, he had a photo of his mother holding a huge Macquarie perch from the Indi River. When I was a boy, the rock cod were very common, even more common than the Murray cod. They were caught up through Coryong and Bringenbrong. The biggest rock cod I caught out of the river on a fishing rod was at the mouth of the Burrowie Creek. In about 1940, it went 53 pound. Well, I had him tethered in the mouth of the creek for three days and he never stopped moving, just backwards and forwards. Not like the Murray cod, they'd just lay quiet. The water used to be clean here. I've been on this property for 50 years. Now the water is dirty. You've got to boil it to drink it. Never had to do that in the past. Some blamed the dams for the dirt. But that didn't happen. The water went dirty after the carp came in. The late Jack Smurden passed away in 1998. He was the local expert on the fish here, spent time in Changi during the war. He could go a long way back, to the 20s. 
He often talked about catching the trout cod in the Murray and the creeks upstream prior to World War II. He said they were prevalent and they could be reliably caught under the wattle trees. That's where the birds used to be. His theory was that the trees or the bird droppings attracted them. We used to go fishing out on the farm in the evenings. For the cod, we used to use the yabbies and the old carp and the aeroplane spinner. Sometimes we used worms. Parrot was a favourite. I remember catching one on half a parrot. It was four pound in the fast water at Tintaldra. I think that was a trout cod. Old George Lloyd told me that in the old days, the best time to catch cod was when the wattles were flowering. There was one missing link, and that was what was in the Upper Murray above Corel. So, what was around Tom Grogan's station? And I just about finished the project, and a newspaper search uncovered two stories. Uh, and both were newspaper stories from explorers in the 1860s and 70s. And they talked about uh, the Upper Murray or Indi River where the Limestone Creek comes in, which is near the source, and there being lots of cod and perch, they could see the fish swimming around. In fact, one of them was written by Howitt, and he said there were so many cod up there, uh, he planned to actually transport them and release them into the Tambo River, a coastal river in Victoria. It was only a six mile trip, so we can actually pinpoint how high up the Murray cod actually got. So within six miles of the top of the catchment. And that happened very late in the project, so we ended up with a very complete picture of what was in the upper Murray River. <laughs>